This is Tuesday, February 20, uh, yeah, February 16th, 2021, meeting of the Board of Health, Berlin Board of Health. As a preliminary matter, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Let me know if I'm going too fast, Sue. Uh, yeah, take, take your time. I'm having trouble getting Bill up, so... Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you. Take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. My name is Paul McKelp, Chairman of the Berlin Board of Health. Let me permit the uh, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on this agenda are present and can hear me prior to me calling the meeting to order. We'll start with Board members first, Bob Wheeler. Sue Regera. Present. Here. And I can hit and I can okay. hear you. Um Phil Brookings. Present. And Donna Trailer. Yep. Okay. That includes <clears throat> uh Neshoba and staff. Um, do we have any anticipated anticipated speakers on the agenda that are in uh, attendance yet? Uh, Steve Spears may be listening in, but I don't anticipate. Okay. Do you, Bill? Right, that bill come up. No, I don't think so. Okay. With a quorum of the Board of Health present, I call this meeting to order at uh, 7.04. Uh, the open meeting of the Berlin Board of Health is conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th. 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. <clears throat> Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of Berlin website www.townofberlin.com. In order to mitigate the transmission of the course, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor, governor's order suspends the requirement of open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, provided reasonable public access can be afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. While no in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted by, is permitted, every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. The standard public comment portion of this meeting will accommodate limited, limited public comment. For this meeting, the Berlin Board of Health is conveying using the Zoom platform as posted on the agenda, identifying how the public may join. Public is encouraged to follow along during this meeting using the posted agenda, unless I know it otherwise. Supporting materials that are available this evening to members of the board can be made available to the public by request. Uh, we can now turn to the first item on the agenda. Um, which I have as 199203 Crosby. With, yeah, if you remember last meeting, we discussed, discussed last meeting. Property. Bill, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Bill. And we've got the two um, single family dwellings on the one property. Um, and the question is, you know, what to respect for bedrooms? One, uh, 203 Crosby Road clearly has a three bedroom permit. So that's a three bedroom home. The 199, the so-called guest house, was called out as a one-bedroom on the permit, um, even though the house appears to be a three-bedroom, um, you know, and has a, I think it's a thousand-gallon tank, like an 800-square-foot bed. 
Um, but I looked at the building file and there's really no indication on, on how that dwelling was classified. So, you know, we may need to fall back to that septic permit um, unless, you know, they want to attempt to, um, you know, do something to that system to have it more in compliance with current code. But I haven't heard from the inspector or the, um, the uh, person from the estate. So I don't know what their plan is. We did tell them it was uh, continued to tonight. Okay. Um, what? Um, was that a discussion or a hearing? Uh, it's a discussion because again, the um, the Title V inspector did right. not submit the Title V yet because he didn't know how to classify that second dwelling as far as number of bedrooms. Right. So this, yeah. Thank you. But that dwelling um, is on record with three bedrooms. Is that correct? The uh, property card. Hmm. I don't have that in front of me. Uh, hmm. She did. She did email it to us, but again, the septic permit says one bedroom. Um, I'd have to check the prop card, but but the sketch she gave us certainly appeared to be a, a three. Okay, just for the sake of conversation um, and I guess early opinion, that if this property is going up for sale and the sketch indicates uh, three bedrooms for the 199. Um, I think it would be appropriate that the um, system uh, reflects that. The correctly sized tank and system uh, reflects three bedrooms if that is how it's going to be sold. So basically respect the one bedroom unless they want to bring that system into um compliance, if you will, with uh, the needs of today's code for three bedrooms. Right, if they so, wanna let sleeping dogs lie, they can sell yeah. it as a one bedroom. So they could um, upgrade the tank to a 1500 and then um, I guess talk to the board further if they propose to do that. Yeah, what, didn't um, the leach feel, uh, wasn't that of uh, an appropriate size for it three was. bedrooms? Yep. Okay, so yep. it's, today's, it's really, uh, any potential issue is in the tank. Yes, correct. Okay. Personally, I don't think that's asking a lot to upgrade that if if that's depending which way they choose to proceed with the sale. So yeah, that sounds good. Moving along from that. Uh, Bill permits or title five inspections or what do you have? Uh, the one permit we have it will be at the 730 hearing. That's an upgrade at 39 Walnut Street. Um, and the one Title V inspection we have, 83 Central Street, was a pass. Oh. So my list is short and simple. Wow. All right. A um, couple updates. Um, I don't remember if I had this information at the last Zoom meeting, but as we all know, uh, Northbrook One and Northbrook Two are under different management uh, organizations. Northbrook One is kind of a homegrown management uh, team from what I gather. Northbrook Two is Maloney Properties. <clears throat> And it was confusion relative to why Northbrook 2 was getting vaccines and Northbrook 1 wasn't. And that was due to uh, a HUD and CDC program, uh, PRAC 202, that I don't know, was initiated sometime in the fall and it was geared to get vaccinations to uh, housing components that focused on elderly and people in need of assistance. From there, it went to CVS. Uh, HUD contracted with CVS and CVS got in touch with Maloney and that's why vaccines happened at Northbrook too. Uh, it came down through the feds via CVS and Maloney. Northbrook One is not part of that stream. So Northbrook One vaccines are occurring as, uh, <clears throat> as they can through Council of Aging uh, 
in cooperation with uh, Neshoba, who um, our, our current town allotment is 10 vaccines a week. And last Wednesday, we had 10 people sign up. I haven't talked to Victoria. I'm hoping that at least 10, those 10 people did get vaccinations. And I guess CBS is coming in for round two to Northbrook sometime in the next couple of days, uh, maybe for follow-up shots and maybe for initial shots for some people. I just found that out a little while ago. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's see. We had a, uh, a request from a realtor. Bill's aware of this because they kind of passed it on to him. Somebody was looking to buy up at uh, Mosaic and their lender wanted to know about a Title V inspection, but as we all yeah. know, that's a DEP system up there. Right. Um, and Bill um, informed the, the realtor and presumably she informed the interested party that there is no Title V inspection uh, uh, required uh, uh, to be applied to that transfer of property. I had received a question from Rockwell about <clears throat> a, I don't know, a curious sounding uh, Board of Health uh, approval of their apartments for rental to some spe special category. I informed the manager that it was something totally new to us that um, I inquired why isn't uh, occupancy permit by the building inspector adequate and her initial response was no they want something else from the Board of Health and uh, I said I would look into it and um, she was to get back to me and did not. So I believe that problem got solved because I mean, they're brand new apartments. Uh, occupancy was approved. Uh, I really am, again, with uh, a DEP system, I'm not sure where the local Board of Health would, would have fit in there. <clears throat> On a more local note, um, the last two Saturdays, I have um, gone down to the transfer station around three o'clock to utilize the facility. And um, I would, I parked and stayed for an hour each time from three to four to do a variety of things, primarily a traffic count. I also wanted to see if there was a uh, late minute, late minute, uh, late hour influx, like right at four o'clock, because I had received an, uh, basically an anonymous complaint that there was trouble getting in at four o'clock. Um, no such thing happened. Uh, I recorded that hour minute by minute. And for each minute recorded what came in for traffic, basically two categories, car or pickup truck. And uh, on both days, and they were cold Saturdays, um, everything seemed to go swimmingly well. There were like 35, no more than 40 customers uh, in each of those hours, they were pretty well spaced out and people just got out of their vehicle, did their thing. Um, I wanted to see if there was much socializing and granted it's only one hour of 20 down there. So there's a lot more information that can be gained at, at different hours and on different days, I'm sure. Uh, I have talked to uh, BP Trucking and asked them to turn up the pressure on the cardboard compactor a little bit to see if we can start getting a little more weight in there. 
because a ton and a half just doesn't, well, from my experience in the industry, that just doesn't cut it. And we're, we're paying to get that thing emptied once a week, even though we do get some uh, compensation, it's nowhere near enough to uh, coincide with the cost of hauling. And BP was in, agree in agreement with me that uh, one and a half tons was really kind of on the shy side. So uh, we'll see what the future bears on that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, no, Sue, go ahead. And just uh, I'm stupid. Um, can the compactor? How many tons will it take? Will it take four tons or five tons? A We're talking the cardboard compactor. Yes. Okay. Trash compactors, those those ton those tonnage eight to twelve, not not a problem. I know that cardboard. Um, my experience, and this is going to be a little longer answer than you wanted, but my my experience is that that should be three to five tons. Now I say that based on the fact that um, I put quite a few of those out when I was in the industry and they were manufacturing places or whatever and uh, nobody broke down boxes. They just threw whatever the cardboard was into the hopper and it got compressed, compacted. Our residents have been schooled to break down all the boxes before they throw them in there. And I personally believe that that's one of the issues because it's one thing to compress a cubic form. It's another thing to compress something flat, call it a board, because the nature of the base, the material inside the box when it gets, when the lower level gets full, the material actually turns. And if you look at the shape of the box, it's not actually rectangular, it's octagonal. And that encourages the load to twist and turn and kick back up over and basically come back. And that's where you get a more full load. It's science, physics, it's whatever you want to call it. But we're, we're all our, the majority of our residents are, are, you know, they've been trained by our staff to break down boxes. Some good reason for that, you don't have to cycle the hopper as many times. You get more in it as opposed to throwing in full size boxes. The downside is, I really believe that that affects the compaction um, ratio effort and we're just not, not getting the uh, typical tonnage and in saying that I um, certainly am not suggesting we retry and we try and retrain our residents because that would be a mistake it would just well, create, create confusion I knew that would be your thinking, but if the thing will take four tons, why are we emptying it every week? Why don't we try to empty it every two weeks? Because I'm told it's full. You well, get caught in the middle. Full. I'm not there. I am relying on our transfer station manager. He says it's full and it's not taking anymore. <clears throat> I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> well, I think turning up the pressure a little, Paul, as long as it's not hurting anything might help. Uh, it, as long as that's like what everybody else is doing, you know, uh, I, I can't fault you for that. I think everything's, you know, I think that's what, a good What idea. do you mean as long as everybody else is doing it? Well, I just mean turning up the pressure. Aren't we at, are we at what everybody else is doing or was it lower or? Well, you know, for, what, for, for what I don't understand, Bobby, is whatever when you say whatever everybody else is doing. I'm not. I'm missing that. Sorry. 
Well, I just mean, uh, are we different than any other town uh, with what we're pressing or no? Uh, well, I have no idea. You, I have you've no been idea in the business, what, you what, know what it will take. You know, I, I don't know as much about it. You do. Uh, I yeah, know. Well, if you expect me to be... know the pressures of the different compactors, the different transfer stations, you're going to oh, yeah. don't hold your breath because I don't know. And, and that's what you're asking either. me. There's yeah. no way to know that. Well, I didn't mean to get into a tough Well, thing. no, I but I mean, I'm answering your question as best I understood it. Right. So, you know, I've talked to BP. They're amenable to turning up the pressure. Okay. It's, it's an experiment. We'll see what yeah. happens. Maybe, and they know their stuff. So, yeah. Maybe we'll blow a hydraulic line. I don't <laughs> know. No, I didn't mean that. I, well, well, I just no, think that that's it's risk reward that's one of the possibilities and just sure. it out um sure. but one and a half tons is in my mind not acceptable from a fiscal no. responsibility point of view i totally agree so we'll, we'll see and i had no nah, never mind i had asked i had asked pete to talk to bp about turning up the pressure and evidently he forgot to do that. So when I had my conversation with yeah. Stephen DePaulo, I made it very clear. And Stephen was in agreement that, you know, because he sees cardboard loads six, seven times. Right. That's what, frequency. that's what I, I would be happy at three and a half or four. I'd be very happy. Sure. I, I'd like to see our payload double. Yep. You know, then it becomes, yeah, okay, right, reasonable. Yep. And we bought heaters on that, so there wouldn't be an issue in the winter or anything, correct, Paul? You you made sure there was heaters no, on that. No, no, no that's, a, that's a BP unit. We we didn't buy any heaters. I don't know if there are heaters on that unit or not. There are heaters, oh, okay. on, there are heaters on the units we bought for trash. Oh, yeah, okay. That shouldn't make a difference, really, but yep. No, it really shouldn't. Nope. Any so, work on the contract? What's that? Oh, they're working on it. <laughs> okay. And they're due for another call. My weekly, uh, like, where the hell is it? Um. We got five. And and one of the just in general conversation, you know, every time I'm down there, I'm looking around and I look at the open top container and I see what people are throwing away. Now, yeah, we have highway department come and they press down on the metal container and they press down on the open top, but I see people throwing away tables with the legs on them, um, just awkward yeah. pieces and i'm trying to make up a draft for our employees and something that might go out with the next time we do a mailing that if you're throwing away stuff like that take the legs off you know um because we're paying for airspace and, and right. you know let your 12 year old year old son get his yo-yos out and break the smash the legs off of something you know help us out here uh, it, right for me or, or treat it's it, common sense but it's not it common as, sense so what am i no it's common sense paul and either that or we treat them as bulky items like okay a lot of but places. then we got that, we don't want to then go we there. have to produce a price list right right correct i was a lot of work there. what's the I was down there last Saturday and Doug was filling in for Pete. Now, one of the things that we had brought down was an old printer. And it was an HP, so it had a lot of metal in it. So Dave uh, had the printer in his hands and Doug was outside and he goes, oh, well, throw that in the open top. And I said, no, it goes in the metal bin. And Dave, of course, is a good husband. He listened to me. He didn't bother to argue. And Doug went, oh, okay. <laughs> he could use um, 
a little more schooling maybe. Mm. I mean, he has a nice demeanor and way he handles people, but he's still yeah. unsure. A lady had asked the question about it. She was buying a half year sticker. And he was saying, well, come back next week when Pete's here. And it's like, but you know me, I can keep my mouth shut. So I said, no. I said, just, I said, we, she goes, well, I have cash. And I said, it's a town thing. They won't let us take cash. I said, check the money order, make it out to the town of Berlin. And she goes, oh, well, I can do that now. I'll be back in 15 minutes. I said, great. <laughs> but Doug was trying to like pass it, come back when Pete's here. Right. Oh, this Doug was this was time. this was last Saturday, like three days ago, four days ago. Uh, it was a Saturday or a third, uh, maybe Thursday. The days run together. Uh, Thursday, I think, is when Pete was not there. Okay, yeah, verify he, verify that with payroll, please. Yeah, he was taking a um scheduled a sick day to get his immunization. Get yep. a shot. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so it would have been a Thursday and Doug was there filling in. Okay. Yep. But no, that was my sense that Doug didn't have the confidence to answer those questions. And he should have been right. able to answer most of those those couple of things that I heard. He should be able to do that now. Now yeah. I don't know if it's the training he's receiving or what, but um I worked with them a little bit over the summer, not this past one, the one prior. Um, I, I'll comment off camera. Um, okay. So if that. Yep, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. um, there's, He's been there a while. Th those, are, those are basic things that Doug or whoever's there should be able to handle. Right. Maybe. Oh, yeah. and, Read the brochure. Yeah, he, he the only one the only one who couldn't and he wouldn't be there by himself is Tom Sharon because of his visual impairment. Right. But I mean, um, Doug, this shouldn't be an issue. Hmm. It, yeah, but well, he's been there a while. He's had training. Right, but evidently, evidently, he needs a little bit more. I was I was surprised. Yeah. I'm so not. I jumped in and answered the questions, but. Um, Donna, you would have been there three weeks and been answering those questions all by yourself. Yeah, that's <laughs> just as a brief aside. I went tr relative to training, I went to Dunkin' Donuts yesterday. I was on my way to act, and I wanted a small coffee in and out. Gal in front of me gives a big food order, there's only one individual working there, and rather than say, you know. A coffee to me no no he put his head down and proceeded to make four or five sandwiches of which i left before the first <laughs> one was completed it's like you you know good it was good Thank business you. bad business at the same time you know it's like it doesn't hurt to ask the person behind you know if there were three or four people i understood you know you don't ask but one person Come on. And the guy didn't have the mask up over his nose. Oh, so right. I'm going back. All right. It's 730. Oh, yeah, 731. 731. What do we got? Hearing, please. Uh, this is the 39 Walnut Street upgrade uh, variance hearing and upgrade permit. Sue, did I fail to ask Steve to email you this plan? Uh, you know, I was afraid you were going to ask me, <laughs> hold on, I'm going to try to share the screen, guys. I think we saw this plan, or maybe I saw it on the conservation. Yeah, it, did uh, go to conservation. it has gone in front, in front of them. Yep. But yeah. Let's see if we can do this. The only place they can put it, right, Bill? Yeah, yeah it was marginal at best, yep. But it is an upgrade, so. Right. Well, I kind of, I don't know, I caught into one of the conservation things and they had gone in front of them, which I thought was great. And they nodded it. Yeah. 
forward. Yeah, there's really no option there. 39, 39 yep. Walnut is whose property? Uh, Dennis Farabay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yep. It's a, it's a big house. It's a, boy, you see it from the back and you believe it's a, it's a six bedroom. It's a, it's a two family, three bedrooms in each uh, up and down. There, can you guys see this? All right. Okay, got it now. How about the other sheet? You know, that yeah, is a two, a two family. Uh, uh, uh. Yes. That's why there's a two compartment tank there, if you just notice that. Yeah. Nope, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. So you got any issues? With no. The um, again, this failed a Title V inspection, and actually, um, I don't have my file with me, but there's that uh, list of variances. Um, lower right of the screen. So um, if you'd like, we can go through the variance list and then we can jump over and look at the layout of the system if you'd like. Let's do that, please. All right, so Sue, yeah, there you go. If you could blow All that right. up for me, yep. that's perfect. Yep, so there's your list. Um, we do have the green card. Steve dropped off hard copies. I'll get them into the board's file. Yep. Um, so uh, three, again, this is pretty standard stuff for an upgrade. 3N, no reserve area shown. Again, there's just the one area being shown for the upgrade to the failed system. Uh, 4B, deep test holes, um, testing done out of season. We had very obvious modeling on uh, October 8th. Um, again, we did one perk versus two, which meets uh, Title V, that's Reg 4D. Um, and then 4F, uh, the distances. Um, tank and pump chamber, 72 feet from well, town says 100, uh, state code says 50. So we are meeting the state code, just not the local offset. Um, system uh, to property line, uh, co uh, local reg says 25, 16 is proposed, state code says 10. So we're going to meeting title five there. Um, the system and tanks to be 100 foot from wetland. The uh, leaching bed 75 feet and uh, tank is 80. Uh, state code is 50 feet for leach area and 25 feet for tank. So again, we're above what the state code says, not meeting the local reg. Um, 4G is depth of material. State code um, says four feet, Berlin says five. Uh, we missed that by just a couple of inches. So meet state code, but not local reg. Uh, and sewer line length is just a function of where that plumbing exits the house and, and where the leach area has to go based on the soil testing. So the total run, um, it's gravity, four inch PVC house to tank, and then it's a pump chamber. So we'll have the force main uh, pumping to that bed. It's 120 feet total. And um, 5C is groundwater offset. State code says four, Berlin says five. They are meeting the four foot offset. And the only other item they need is what's called the local upgrade approval where the state code allows the board to relax Title V requirements on upgrades. And in this case, due to the groundwater uh, table being relatively high, we do not have the 12 inch separation between uh, seasonal high water based on modeling and the inverts of the septic tank and pump chamber. And when this uh, request is made, it, we just need to make sure that those inverts are watertight. So they take an extra step and they do seal them with hydraulic cement, not just the rubber boot. Okay. So I don't know if you have any questions on the variances. If not, we can take a peek at the layout. Uh, let's go to layout. Uh, where it's at, is this what you want to see or? Yes, yep. Yeah. Yep, might just back it off just a bit. We can see the whole uh, system in one shot. Yep. So you Thanks, can see, you see the existing leach area that's labeled uh, towards the wetlands there adjacent to the bed. So that did fail a Title V inspection uh, a few months ago. Actually, yeah, it was probably in the fall. Uh, so that prompted us to go out and do some soil testing. Uh, you can see we did um, quite a few test holes to find that one area. Um, and we did get a 30 minute perk. So not, not, not great soil. And again, a high water table. So there's a good size Presby bed proposed um, to handle that six bedroom flow. But does meet state code. Okay. And it met 
well, it didn't meet code. What, you're putting up a regular system, Billy, and proposing a presby, which is a little nicer. Well, it, it's um, a, a presby bed uh, has a smaller footprint. So again, where, where there's the wetlands offset, you've got the well the property line. Um, I think that's why the engineer probably chose the presby bed. Sure. No, I have no problem with it. Paul, do you have any questions? Well, it is what it is, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's okay. certainly an improvement over what's there, no question. Oh, right. What, right. What's there has to be in the water table, no doubt. Then <laughs> I'd like to propose a motion to approve all requested variances. I would second that, Susan. Okay, all in favor, and we'll do a roll call. Sue first. Aye. Bobby. All right. Paul. I also. Variance is approved. All right. So I do a permit drafted, and um, if the board's okay with that. I'll sign it, and um, probably get it to Dennis tomorrow when I see him at the town office. Okay. Good. All right. Well, I guess this property has been sold. So. Yes, correct. And I, I, um, I don't know. He, he's uh, got that property on Highland Street and this sold rather quickly. Yeah. 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 Well, two family in Berlin. Yeah. Yep. Real fast. Yeah, really? Real yeah, fast. not too common. Bill, are you familiar with the Geomat technology? I am. I, um, I've, in, I've inspected two in the town of Stowe. I've reviewed and approved one in the town of Lancaster, and I have one on my desk right now uh, in in Bolton. And I did just attend um, a webinar last uh, Thursday on the Geomat. It's um, it, we're going to see a lot of them. I think it's a it's an extremely low profile system. It's about a an inch or a two inch profile. Um, it doesn't require the five foot strip of top and subsoil. It only requires uh, either one or two feet, depending on the installation. Um, so, uh, you know, they're certainly attractive to the homeowner. Um, one of the ones I looked at in Stowe, the home on either side had the typical burial mounds in the backyard, and this <laughs> lawn was changing elevation about six inches. So you can see the aesthetic uh, desire there to not have that mound. Yeah, I, I became familiar with it through a conversation with Rich Hanks, because yep. he's dealing with a property, I believe, in Townsend. Oh, yeah, we spoke of it. Yep. Yep. And uh, he explained a little bit in the... Uh, the impact it had on his particular site was um, huge, really. He described how reducing the breakout saved some trees and obviously visually um, saved the property, right? And this is a, a, a DEP approved uh, technology. It, it's one of the most recent approved, yes. I actually attended a seminar. It was probably just over a year ago because it was just before COVID hit over at the Acton Town Hall and they actually had the the company in and had samples of the product. It's a, it's pretty simple. It's a, it's a, a plastic fiber core, if you will, comes in, um, I think it's 12, 24, 39 inch, there's different widths, but it comes in a roll. So you cut the length that you need. Um, and this core is surrounded by a, they call it a, I think a hydrostatic type. It's a special fabric that kind of wicks the water away once it hits it. So they're given credit for that top and bottom, you know, because the whole thing is enveloped in that fabric. Um, in, in the webinar, they showed how uh, it can be gravity or pressure dose, but pressure dose is, is preferred because you're feeding it and giving it a break. Yeah, I was just going to say, doesn't it have to be pressure dose? It, it does not have to be. It, it's certainly probably preferred, but the one I'm looking at in Bolton is actually the first gravity one that I'll look at. But the the, the dose, they actually had a, a system installed with like a plexiglass tank around it so you could see the cross section of the system. And this thing has been in use for years and there was really no biomat forming. Cause again, it, it just, the minute the water hits that core in the fabric, it just wicks off into the sand. So it's kind of interesting, it's a different technology. It doesn't have any storage really. And they described how storage isn't really a good thing because storage it tends to go that anaerobic route of what water sitting around it doesn't have a lot of oxygen at this here you kind of hit that core and it gets uh, um, taken into the soil around it and it requires less septic sand doesn't it it does it does mm. yep so it could be a cost savings and certainly aesthetics um, 
for the homeowner. So I, I think uh, we're I'm sure the manufacturer is going to take into consideration those cost savings relative to pricing his mat. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not a cheap mat. Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it, I think we'll see more. I, I think it's, you know, for a while we were seeing Presby's on all the upgrades. I think you might start seeing more geo mats on the upgrades now. Very interesting. Yep, it is. It's an interesting product. Anything to get rid of burial mounds would be yes. good. Yep. <laughs> well, sand is, is getting harder to find. It's getting more expensive because it's being hauled in from further away. So there's right, right. plenty of benefits there. Okay. Uh, we'll start with you, Bill. Do you have anything new for us? I do not. Okay. Um, does anybody have anything for discussion that would involve Bill before we cut him loose? Uh, no. Just COVID, Bill. Anything? Uh, I guess everybody's caught us up to date on. Yeah, I mean, know, stuff coming out. I, I don't want to jinx yeah. it, but it's been quiet. I think people are now focused yeah. on vaccines more than mass complaints. So, yeah, we'll see where that goes. Paul, I did. I did go to the DEH um, conference call this afternoon, and they were focused on the. The, the senior housing vaccine. So I will reach out to Northbrook one with some information that I got today just to see if it might be helpful to them. Okay, uh, just briefly that I, I think it's all transpired since our last zoom meeting but the uh, Emerson hospital checklist cold flu COVID oh, yeah. Donna copied and uh, laminated. I distributed them to 19 Carter, um, Riverbridge Shell, the autism facility, the, the pizza place down at Riverbridge, as well as uh, the Rockwell, just to get the information out there to people. And general store, you said, Paul, right? Yeah, the general store. I don't, <laughs> like, I don't like where they have it posted, but they have it. <laughs> oh, I did, yeah. But, uh... No, that was a good job. Thank you. So, more information the better. Our new file yep. cabinet is scheduled to come in tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move that other one. I wouldn't far. move that other one very far because it's got all the packing right there. <laughs> so oh. they're supposed to come. I believe they're supposed to come and take the old one away. Oh, are they? Oh. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Okay. Well, okay. if I if I get my act together early enough, I'm just going to move it out in the hallway so that they All can right. put the new one inside. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm planning on coming in tomorrow, I guess, per my schedule yeah. instead of Friday. So um, the other file cabinet that was damaged, where did that end up? It's sitting right where it was. I was going to move it out into the no, hall. The and Sue saying, "No, the one." Oh no, that one ended. I'm sorry. The okay. one with the broken drawer is in two eighteen. Okay, and okay. you're going to get rid of that, right? No, okay. I talked with Margaret and asked her to make an executive decision because I can't <laughs> throw away things that are three quarters good. Oh, right. It has, three, <laughs> it has three drawers at work, and I just couldn't throw it away. <laughs> So she said, just put it in 218. We'll sort it out later. So I did. Yeah, because we I, I'm going to need it for overflow um, coming up at some point. So. Oh, OK. Yeah, because I I mean, I, I'm squeezing in as much files as I can do, but I'm running out of my and my talk. Well, what we might do is uh, I'll take a look at just removing that broken drawer and converting that space into a shelf for okay. whatever purposes. OK. That would work. Should we should we just get another one, Paul, and uh, put it towards uh, COVID relief funds? Or? We really uh, don't. You want cutting to... the check for that one, Bobby? I haven't got a check yet. No. Oh no! Are no. uh, you cutting the new check for the new cabinet? No, no. Well, you got to talk to Sue then, because I got a lot of ideas. She's the one pinching the pennies. Yeah, it's not COVID. It's I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but are you, what are you filing in it here? I, don't, I I pulled it and it's like whoops. No, that's for all our street files, and we don't have any more walls. All our files are jammed. They're yeah. full. They're full. Right. I'll try to get in there and start seeing if we can. Sorry, hey, sorry. Excuse me, Bill. 
Have a good oh, night. Uh, yeah, Don, you don't have to hang around. I got a question for Don. Sorry. Uh, what time are you in tomorrow? I didn't go in today uh, with the icing, so I'm gonna. I was planning on hitting tomorrow, but I don't want to. I don't want to mess up your schedule. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Um, I was gonna do the eight to noon, but I can work around you. It's just oh, I'm not coming okay. in Friday. I'm on vacation this week, and I'm just. I'm really stressed with my mom and stuff. So. Yeah, I hadn't heard. Um, we, no, we can talk. Uh, you can keep me posted on that, but may, maybe I'll come in and I can always do some paperwork in another office. Well, I can come in at different times if you want. Um, well, I'm going to be, um, I was thinking uh, maybe eight to 10, but, but again, I don't want to, you know, I can work in another office too. Yeah, but, but, but you, you utilize the phone a lot. So, right, I mean, right. if Donna can shift, if it's all right yeah. with you, Donna, let Bill come yeah. in to do his thing. Yeah, I, I can do 10 to 2. If it, that's it's, okay with you, that'd be great. Oh, yeah, it's just, yeah. That's fine. Okay. All right. We'll work that one out. Yep. All right. Yep. Well, I'll probably catch you. I won't, you know, I'll probably hang out till, till you get there so we can catch up. Okay. All right. That's good night, nice. Joe. All right. Good night. Good night, Bill. So for all essential purposes, this meeting has been adjourned and I'm going to stop the recording, okay? Okay. So I hear a motion. Bobby. I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. All right. All in favor? Bobby first. Aye. Aye. Paul, I, this meeting is adjourned at 751.